And uh, it is juicy part of the season. That's why we have Lock and Fora, who is back with us here. Jason from CBSSports.com, NFL Insider. You can see him on the NFL Today and Tops and uh, anywhere with the CBS platforms. Happy uh, belated Thanksgiving. Jay, how are you today, pal? I'm all right. Same to you guys. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm rumbling uh, through New York State on the train here. So hopefully uh, uh, we got you. you fiber a little, or whatever. little different, but way along actually way. might be an improvement. Nah, <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> Hey, Jay, um, I mean, let's face it. The the train is completely off the uh, the rails in Philly. What um, what happens here? I mean, first of all, do you believe the assertion from uh, a few agents last week that the team has quit on Chip Kelly? Well, I mean, you're going to be able to find a certain segment of, of any losing team, and especially one that has a polarizing head coach. Um you know, who would say that? The question is how many players on that team does the agent represent? And any time I start going that route to find information, the first thing you got to make sure is how many people does he represent on the team, how significant are those players, and then can you get some of those players to verify it, and then can you get other players and agents who aren't connected to that sort of click to do the same? Um, because we're talking a lot, of, including practice squad, you're talking a lot of human beings here who all have a lot of different stuff going on. But, mm-hmm. I mean, look, is it a stretch? No, not at all. There's been problems there, you know, going a ways back. I mean, we've seen guys come out openly, some while they're still there, and many as soon as they left saying, we don't like the, you know, guys there don't like the way he does things. He doesn't, you know, ingratiate himself to people the right way. He's overboard with the big brother stuff, monitoring everybody's sleep and eat patterns and, you know, wanting to know what they're up to 365, um, you know, days a year. So, uh, there's, there's issues there. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. There have been issues there. And there probably will continue to be issues there for the rest of the season. The only thing that really is going to matter here, though, is what does Chip Kelly want to do? I don't believe ownership is going to um, run him off. I, I, they just handed him the entire building, you know. So 12 games or whatever, yeah, there's some problems there. But they didn't invest in this thing like they did to get to this point, and let's recall, before they double back and beg Chip Kelly to take this job and let him hire his own personnel guy, Tom Gamble at the time, and all that, they were, they were talking to Brian Billick and Gus Bradley, you know what I mean? Like, and that, that was like their Ken Wisenhunt, you know? Like, that was their recent interview. So it's not like this was people's dream job, necessarily. So saying all that, I think Chip Kelly goes back to college and renders it a moot point. But if he doesn't, um, you know, that's when things get interesting. Wow, you know, you think about him going back to college, and that's what we've said. His next move would not necessarily be one of the openings or potential openings in the National Football League, unless it was Tennessee because of the Mariota uh, uh, connection. But but going back to college would be the right way to go. And you talked about ownership and Jeffrey Lurie. Do you think they regret going with this experiment that is Chip Kelly? I mean, I think that we, at this snapshot right now, um, you would say it's bad, but I think people forget, you know, how much Andy Reid kind of struggled, yeah. you know, early on there as well. And did he have a quarterback or didn't he? And, and, you know, the development of Donovan McNabb and keeping that team together. And, I, you know, you, you had a lot of big personalities in some of those, those teams, Jeremiah Trotter, guys like that, who I don't think necessarily, you know, were, were fully bought in on Andy Reid and who the heck is Andy Reid. And, and he stuck with it and it ended up being, while well, they didn't win a Super Bowl, you know, one of the better marriages, long-term marriages we've seen in the league for a while. I think that's Jeffrey's sort of worldview on it. And he, he, he's taking the long view. And I, I don't see – he's he dealt with, you know, the, the, the tabloid media and the kind of stuff that's going to happen in Philly. He knows his fan base can be overboard. He's not going to let that um, color his opinion too much. Certainly he'll talk to players on engine interviews. There'll be, there might be things that have to change. But the people I know who know him really well don't think the impetus for change would come from him. If it's coming from mm. somewhere, it would be Chip just saying, enough's enough. You know, I, I, want, I want to go do my own thing. I want to go back to what's comfortable for me. I want to have full, complete autonomy and hold, literally hold these kids' futures in his hand, which is what you do as a college coach. You bench a kid in college, he doesn't play, you have a chance you know, to cost him millions of dollars. You never have that sort of control over adult men, many of whom make more money than him. Yeah, that's what we said before. There's no that's a fair point. Jason Locking for CBS Sports NFL Insider. As usual, Friday spot, NFL Today, uh, CBSSports.com. Catch him on tops with us on Sunday morning on CBS Sports Network. All right, Jay, there's a couple of games here that, you know, on the surface, a uh, bunch of 5-5 five and five teams hooking up, but it seems like a few 5-5 five and five teams 
their arrow was pointing up. And one of the uh, real intriguing teams all of a sudden, I believe, is Kansas City. They yeah. host the Bills, who are coming off a tough loss. Bills really should have probably beat the Pats the other night. But Kansas City's schedule is very favorable. Yeah. You think this team wins four or five games the rest of the way and gets in? I think they could. I mean, this was a defense that the first five weeks of the season has given up about 30 points a game. Um, you know, they, they got a couple of guys healthy. They, they, they tweaked a few things. And you look at them now, I think the last five weeks they're giving up about 10, 10 points a game. Um, you've got Tom Ali and Justin Houston coming off the edge. I don't know that too many people are doing it better than them right now. Um, you know, Sean Smith and Marcus Peters in the secondary. Uh, you've got Eric Berry, who's gotten, you know, healthier, and that's been a tremendous story, seeing him come back from cancer. You know, Don Terry Poe anchoring the middle. And then offensively, they're just running the heck out of the ball. They're not trying to be something that they're not. Um, Alex Smith hasn't thrown an interception in seven games, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's conducive to success. And as you noted, they're not playing murderers row. So I think they're a darn dangerous team, and I, I do think they can get in. You know, one of the uh, big uh, the Sunday night game is an, an interesting one on so many different levels. The Patriots are undefeated at 10-0, and 0, taking, uh, going out to Denver to play the Brock Osweiler-led Denver Broncos squad. What happens if Brock plays great against the Patriots and beats them? Is there a chance that he finishes the season and Peyton Manning doesn't get back under the helm? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I think some people just refuse to look at reality here. And, and I mean, I, I can just go back to what I've been reporting since – the Monday after the Kansas City loss, which is this is Brock Osweiler's job to lose, and, and it's as simple as that. And, and if he can execute, he doesn't have to be. I mean, he doesn't have to be great. He just just don't be awful. If he's anything close to what he was in Chicago for the next few weeks, then then forget about it. They're, 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 this is this is Gary Kubiak's offense. This is it. The other thing wasn't it. And. This guy's younger and more agile and just able to run bootlegs. And they don't have to change things on the fly to try to force people into the pistol, or force this guy yep. into the shotgun. And, and even then, Peyton has not been good for a long time. It goes back to last year. So they're trying to win the Super Bowl right now. And, and you, you got to forget about, you know, the last name. And, and, yeah, you know, maybe he's the greatest ever and all that stuff. But – you know, it ended for Johnny Unitas. It ended for Dan Marino. It ended Always for does. John Elway. It is yeah. ending for Peyton Manning. No doubt. Uh, Jay, we got about a little less than two minutes here. Jason Lock and Four, CBS Sports NFL Insider. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody say this, and I certainly haven't really thought about it until last night, but watching the Favre ceremony and then getting ready for the, uh, for the games this weekend and, and knowing how he's played uh, as a rookie – I know that it's uncommon for a lot of people to compare, you know, white to black or, or vice versa. The more, but I, when I watch Jameis Winston, I'm starting to see a little Brett Favre, uh, a, a vocal, fun leader, a uh, bit of a gunslinger, uh, just a, like almost like a high schoolish uh, love for the game. It, d- do you see any similarities between Favre and Winston at all? Um, yeah, I, I think you could maybe see that a little bit. I mean, when you see Winston going airborne, doing some things that athletically you don't necessarily think his body would let him do, but some of the rushing touchdowns he's had, the way the team gravitates to him, the way they seem to be taking on his persona, um, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, Cam's another guy. I mean, who, who plays the game with more joy right now than Cam? I mean, who really looks like they enjoy football more than Cam right now? I mean, not too many people to me. Certainly, that was Brett Favre's, you know, that, that, that he wore that on his sleeve. All righty. There he is. Jay, uh, safe travels, and I know we'll see you on Sunday, and uh, we'll be reading you over the weekend. Definitely check him out on CBSSports.com. Lines it all up for you getting ready for Week 12. Thanks, buddy. Hey, have a good one, guys. Bye.